Good morning, I'm Robert Dean Steele, and this is your uh, Saturday morning prayer time, August the 20th. It is going by very, very quickly, and I am so glad that you are able to join me today in this prayer time. Father, we thank you today for this wonderful opportunity, Lord, to be able, Lord, to spend some time together in worship and in as well, Lord, prayer. So we ask your blessing upon it now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I'm so glad that you are able to join me today, and I'm excited about being able to uh, pray with you today. As you know, our habit is to pray with you every day, and uh, I especially enjoy doing the weekends with you because the simple fact is that uh, it is my opportunity to prepare for Sunday and also as well for uh, praying with you on Saturday morning. So, Father, we thank you today for what we're going to pray about. Now, Lord, there are about three or four uh, things that we're going to pray for today. And uh, the formula that we're going to use, Lord, is both uh, as well, Lord, uh, how that we uh, want to see a breakthrough. So the first thing we want to do, Lord, is we want to set the agenda for our lives. Father, the Bible says that uh, the first thing we need to do is present our lives to you. So that's what we're going to do, Lord. The Bible says in uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice. So, Father, today, that is exactly what we're going to do. Every thought, every word, every deed, every attitude, we are turning over to you right now. And we are thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able, Lord, to pray and to give ourselves over to you. What a wonderful opportunity it is for us to be able to do that today. To actually, Lord, spend time in your presence. To have your reality in our lives. To, Lord, give our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our attitude, our motives, our past, our present, our future, our time, our talents, and resources. They're all yours right now. And Father, what we want to do in this moment is we want to let go of the scars, the sorrows, the pain, the anxiety, the fears, all the things that, Lord, we've been dealing with this week. We are surrendering to you in this Saturday morning prayer time. We want your agenda in every aspect of this time. Holy Spirit, there's a wonderful scripture that's found in Romans chapter 8. And it's where you say through the Apostle Paul that you're going to enable us, you're going to help us, you're going to guide us through this prayer time. You see, Lord, we don't want to pray our agenda. We want to pray your agenda. We want to make sure that all the things that we covered today in this prayer time are everything that you want to see happen. It is our desire to see that happen. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we are giving everything over to you. All that we are, all that we're ever going to be, we're going to give to you right now. Now, Lord, we, when we present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice, we recognize that it has two qualities. Number one, holy. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we are setting ourselves apart for holy purposes. And the analogy that we have is the analogy that David gives to us in Psalm 120, 133, verse number one. He says, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Then in verse two, he says, it is like Aaron having the oil poured over his head, down through his beard into the folds of his cloak. In the mind of David, he saw an event that happened several hundred years before. He saw Moses uh, consecrating Aaron to uh, the service of the high priest. And he saw in his mind's eye, as he was describing in Psalm 133, he saw Moses pouring the oil over the head of, of Aaron. And it began to run down. And we're not just talking a little dabble, do you? We're talking about a, a, a full anointing as it began to flow down 
in over his head, into his ears, down into his beard, down into the folds of his clothes. And it was a symbol of his entire consecration, his entire dedication, his entire obedience and faithfulness and loyalty to the work and to the plans and purposes of God. From that moment forward, Aaron was not the same man. He was consecrated. He was dedicated to the work exclusively of the Lord. His life would be entirely in the service of the, of the God of Israel. And Lord, this morning, that's what we want in our lives. We want our lives to be entirely, completely, and totally dedicated to the work and service of God. We know that our destiny is an eternal destiny. We know that our eternal, our, our, our life story now begins with an eternal purpose and plan for our lives. That's what is happening with Moses, and that's what happened with Aaron. And David saw that. David saw the anointing as something that would break the yoke. He saw that the anointing and the wonderful abundance and eternal life that only God can give was what he wanted to do with his life, and that's what we want to do with our lives. We want to make sure that, Lord, every moment of every day is given over to you. That, Lord, we're not just about uh, creating wealth or making family, or, you know, doing a vocation, or whatever it is that people in the world do. That We are not of that generation. We're not of that vernacular. We are people of God. We are dedicated to the eternal purpose. That's what we're doing. Holy and acceptable. Lord, that's beautiful to know that you, when, when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ, to know that in that moment, we were accepted. We were sinners. But when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ, you changed us. We were no longer sinners, saved by grace. We were also, Lord, saints, accepted by God, given over to God. In that moment, you didn't look at us the same way any longer. We became joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We became children of God. We became part of the family of God. Like the old song says, when it said, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Joint heirs with Jesus. Yes, we have been wonderfully and gloriously saved by his blood. Thank you for the broken body. Thank you for the shed blood. Thank you, Lord, for the death the burial, and the resurrection. Every one of these wonderful things that were done for us had absolutely nothing to do with anything that we did. For by grace we were saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is gift of God, lest any man should boast. What a wonderful situation. We're accepted. We are consecrated. We belong to God. He sanctified us, and then he began to continually sanctify us. We are daily growing in the grace, the knowledge, the love, and the peace of God. This is our moment to fully comprehend, to fully receive it right now in Jesus' name. Then Paul goes on to say, he says, do not conform to the images or standards of this world. So Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we are going to throw off all the shackles, all the chains, all the hindrances, Lord, in our lives. This is the moment of our complete and total deliverance. Because, Lord, when we go into the next section of our prayer time, where we pray for people to come to our churches, when we pray for individuals to be wonderfully and gloriously touched, we want to make sure that, Lord, there is absolutely nothing that is keeping us from our victory today in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, right now, in this moment, Father, we want to make sure that we have not given ourselves over to pride, pleasure, or possessions. We want nothing in our lives that, Lord, 
would hinder our relationship with God or our prayer time. So, Lord, that's why we've confessed it. That's why we've told you about every thought, word, deed, attitude, and motive. That's why we've said, Lord, we're getting rid of it right now. We're receiving the blood. We're asking the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us from all sin. Now, Lord, what we want to do is we want to be transformed. Now, Lord, how do we get transformed? By the renewing of our mind. Lord, we want to make sure that everything that we pray today is according to your word. That we will not miss one incredible blessing. Lord, we know that it was through the word of God that and, and saturating our prayer with the word of God that we are going to see the full benefits of heaven, the full benefits of salvation, the full benefits and blessings of eternal and abundant life. Thank you for that today. And thank you, Lord, today, that as your word transforms us, Lord, we're going to have new thoughts. Whatsoever things are right and pure and holy and praiseworthy, virtuous and true, lovely. Lord, these are the things that we're going to think on today. We're going to allow your word to become the number one thing that we read. It, in fact, it was Smith Wigglesworth who said this, A man is not fully dressed unless he has with him and on his possession, walking with him, a, a copy of the Word of God. Father, thank you for that today. And thank you that, Lord, we are going to make sure that throughout this day, we are going to be praying without ceasing and also as well, Lord, we are going to allow the wonderful washing of the word, as the book of Ephesians tells us. Lord, we want to make sure that we are cleansed through and through. Because the transforming of our mind, walking in the spirit, is allowing each moment of our mind to be dwelling on you. When we get up in the morning, we're thinking about the word of God. As we go throughout the way, out throughout the day, we're thinking about the word of God. When we close our eyes at night, Lord, we're thinking about the Word of God. It was the Lord who said to uh, Joshua, meditate on the Word of God night and day. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. That's why we're here this morning. That's why we're praying. And we're not conforming, but transformed by the new, that we would know what? The perfect and acceptable will of God. There are two aspects to the word of God or to the will of God that we want to pray about today. The first one, of course, Lord, is that we would go into our world and fulfill, Lord, uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19, which says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, making uh, making disciples of all men, baptizing the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, today... We want to be about the master's business. We want to be doing the will of our Father today. But we can't do the will of our Father today if we haven't spent time in the Word or praying. And that's why we're here today. We're here today, Lord, to pray. To make sure that, Lord, everything that we pray is according to the Word of God. So thank you for that today. And thank you, Lord, for this moment that, Lord, we've had together to prepare ourselves now we're heading into intercession. Father, today there is a beautiful, wonderful promise found in Joel 2.28 that says you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Our sons and our daughters will prophesy. Our old men will dream dreams. Our young men and women will, will see visions. Well, Father, today the essence of that particular scripture is that in the last days you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And that's what we are, and that's where we are, Lord, right now. We're living in the last days. Lord, every day that we live is one day closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at any moment. And this is what we would call the blessed hope. Any moment, either through the portal of death or through the portal of the rapture, Lord, we are going to meet you. And so, Lord, we want to make sure that every time we gather together, that is a a really important part of our prayer time, to remember 
that you could come back at any time. And we living in the last days need to pray for certain things. What should we be praying for? We should be praying for a mighty revival, a mighty move of God. We need to pray for those that we love and care about. We need to pray for our unsaved loved ones. So in this moment, Lord, we are going to make three declarations. Number one, we're going to make the declaration of Acts 16.31 that says, not only shall we be saved, but our household as well. Father, you know and you love our unsaved loved ones. You have a very special place in your heart for them. And we want to make sure that, Lord, we are praying for them, that we are covering them with prayer. We don't want them, Lord, to go to a lost eternity. So right now, we are declaring that wonderful scripture from Peter that says, God does not want anyone should perish, but all to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is what we want to see happen today. And so, Lord, whether it is our spouses, whether it is our children, our grandchildren, whether it is even our great-grandchildren, if we have that wonderful privilege. Lord, we're praying right now for their spouses. We're praying, Lord, right now for our moms and our dads. We're praying, Lord, for our brothers and our sisters. We're praying, Lord, today for our cousins and any other um, relationship that they may be. Father, there are even people that have become part of our family. We consider them part of our children. So, Father, whatever or whoever they are, Father, today, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for household salvation. Lord, I remember the story of the uh, two ladies in the New Hebrides revival. There were two sisters who were praying. They had two objects of their prayers. Number one, they were praying, of course, for household salvation. They were praying that those islands would be powerfully impacted by, of course, the Spirit of God. And secondly, they were praying for the young people. Well, Lord, you gave them two wonderful promises and blessings. You gave them exactly what they're praying for. And Lord, that's the beauty of prayer. Lord, you gave them household salvation, and you also gave them, Lord, of course, the uh, uh, young people. And Lord, that's what we want to see. We want to see household salvation. That's why we're making that declaration. Secondly, Lord, we're making a declaration concerning, Lord, the um, concerning uh, our uh, Proverbs 22, 6, train a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying for our wayward children. Lord, there is a very alarming statistic that was reported by Focus on the Family. Focus on the Family said that our children, when they go to, uh, uh, to a college or to a post-secondary uh, uh, university or uh, someplace like that, then what happens is they have a crisis of faith. Father, we know that we must do everything we can to prepare our children for that crisis of faith. We know that one day they're going to have to make a decision, and that decision is either to serve you or not to serve you, to listen to the world or not to listen to the world. What we're praying today is that, Lord, those wonderful promises, those wonderful prayer times, those wonderful principles, those wonderful uh, doctrinal positions that, Lord, we took, they themselves are going to look at them and they're going to say, mom and dad were right. And then they are going to fall into following, uh, following the Lord. They're not going to choose to the images or standards of this world. Father, we are praying for our kids. We are praying for them whenever they have that crisis of faith, whatever age it happens, that Lord, as we say when we dedicate our children at the time of what we would call consent. In the time where they make their decision, they will turn to the Lord. We're making that decision. And Lord, also as well, we're praying today for wayward children. We're praying for the prodigals. We're standing in the gap for them right now in Jesus' name. Thank you that, Lord, they are going to come to themselves. They're going to say, you know, mom and dad are going to accept me. And Father, we want to, of course, be like the father who was waiting for the prodigal. 
He was looking for that boy to return home. He believed the promise of God. He knew that the principles that he had instilled in that son would eventually come through. He had the promise of Proverbs 22, 6, and he stood upon it. And when his son came over the hill, his son didn't look go so good, didn't smell so good, and had this great speech all in uh, all ready to go. And the father threw his arms around him. He put new clothes on him. He put the ring on him. He kissed him. He had a banquet. And Lord, that is what we are doing today. We are going to receive them back. We are thanking you for the promise of God. Now, Lord, also as well, we are praying the, by faith, Joshua 24, 15, which basically says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We are believing for that today. We are standing on that today. Father, our unsaved loved ones are going to come back. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. It's going to be absolutely fabulous. Lord, that's why we're declaring what we're declaring today. That's why we're standing on what we're standing on today. Because Lord, this is that moment of household salvation. This is the moment that Lord, like Job of old, we are standing uh, in that time of prayer. We have brought each one of our children before the Lord. We've said, Lord, here they are. And Lord, if they have done anything to offend you on behalf of myself and on behalf of this sacrifice, the sacrifice, of course, we know is Jesus Christ. Lord, do not hold it against them. That's what we're praying for today. Secondly, Lord, we're praying for the church. That's right. What a wonderful privilege it is to pray for the church. Whether we are a charismatic or a Pentecostal, whether we are a liturgical or traditional Christian, whether we are, Lord, a fundamentalist Christian, it doesn't matter. Lord, we who have a personal relationship with you, we are praying for them. Lord, we know that it is Jesus Christ that makes us all one. We know that, Lord, no matter what the tradition may be, Lord, we're not focusing today on whether or not we have a liturgy or a Eucharist or a Mass, or whether or not, Lord, we have a more uh, non-traditional service. Lord, whether we sing hymns or choruses, whatever our tradition or Sunday morning service looks like, Father, today we are praying for the church in general. Lord, we're going to take a moment and do a First Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Lord, that's what we're going to do right now. Because we know that, Lord, our society is in trouble. And the ones who have the answer are the believers whose names and follow Jesus Christ. So right now, in this moment, Lord, we are going to prepare ourselves, Lord, to pray effectively for the next three groups. The first group, Lord, that we'll be praying for is, of course, the disenfranchised. Then we'll be praying for the backsliders. And lastly, we'll be praying for the unsaved. But Lord, we're going to humble ourselves. We're going to say, Lord, here's our lives. Now, we've already done that, Lord, to a certain point, but we've humbled ourselves. Now, Lord, we're taking on the mantle of prayer. We are presenting these individuals for you. We are acting like Eleazar. We are standing between the living and the dead. We know that, Lord, our prayers are both effective and fervent because that's what it says in James. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And Lord, we want to make sure that our prayers are effective. We are standing in the gap for those who would not pray for themselves. Or we're standing in the gap, Lord, today for those who need prayer. And Lord, every one of us needs prayer. So Lord, today we're humbling ourselves, we're praying, we are seeking your face. I love what it says in Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 8. It says, ask and it'll be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Those who ask will receive. Those who knock, the door is going to be open. Those, of course, who uh, ask the Lord of anything, and Jesus said, ask anything in my name and it will be done. So, Father, we're asking, we're seeking, we're knocking. We're asking that, Lord, today you are going to move 
powerfully and effectively. We've already claimed the wonderful promise, Lord, of of uh, Joel 2.28, that you would pour your spirit upon all flesh. We've asked you to do it, Lord, in our families. We're asking you to do it today in the church, Lord. We're asking that, Lord, right now, as we have humbled ourselves, prayed, seek your face, and, Lord, we've turned from our wicked ways. We've done that already, Lord. You are going to now give us the threefold promise. Number one, you're going to hear from heaven. Thank you for hearing from heaven. You're going to forgive our sins. Thank you for forgiving our sins. And lastly, you are going to heal our land. Father, we're, we need a healing in our land. We see the chaos of the world, the flesh, and the devil. We see that there is an agenda of evil being practiced, Lord, being promoted and proclaimed on our land. And Father, we want to have the wonderful promise in Canada, Lord, of what is on the Peace Tower, based upon the psalm that said, He shall have dominion from sea to sea. That's what we want to see. We want the Lord to have dominion from sea to sea in our country. We want to see it happen to every man, woman, child, and young person. We want to see our children, our young people, our young adults, our young families, our families with teenagers, our empty nesters and seniors, Lord. We want every age bracket. We want every gender. We want every tribe, every language that inhabits this nation. Lord, Canada is such a blessed nation. We have so many diversified uh, people in this nation, Lord. There are over 200 nations in the world, and Lord, Canada has representatives and people from every one of those nations, and thank you for that. And that's why we're praying today that our nation would come to you, that Lord, we would see that happen right now in Jesus' name. The ones who are going to make that happen, Lord, the ones who are going to bring these 10 million people to the Lord. Did I say 10 million? Yes. Absolutely. Lord, I've had a belief, a belief that we would have 10 million people getting saved. And I'm praying that it starts right now. I'm praying that it starts right at this moment. That, Father, whether it is where I'm situated in the city of Edmonton or, Lord, in the city of St. Albert where I pastor, Father, that it would happen in my province, that, Lord, I'm going to pray right now, that we're going to see over the next few months, in fact, over the next few months, by the end of the year, let's believe, Lord, for a million people to give their lives to Jesus Christ in this province. Father, that we would see 10 million people giving their lives to Jesus Christ across this land. What a wonderful uh, situation that would be. Imagine 10 million people serving the Lord. It would change the entire spiritual dynamic of this country of Canada. And Lord, to have a billion people giving their lives to Jesus Christ over the next few months, Lord, across the world, it would absolutely change everything and Father, it would prepare us for the greatest move of God. And that's what we're praying for. We're praying for a move of God that will be unprecedented. It will be greater than the Great Awakening. It'll be greater than the Reformation. Lord, that's what we're praying for. We're also praying that you would raise up someone, Lord, who would be able to lead that. A John Wesley, a, a, a Smith Wigglesworth, Lord a Catherine Kuhlman, whoever it would be that you would have them, Lord, to do this. This is what we're praying for today. And the church carries the mantle to make that happen. Father, would you touch your church? Would you empower your church? Would you raise up pastors, Lord, that only would preach, thus saith the word of the Lord, that the coldness, the indifference, the lukewarmness would dissipate would disappear from our churches. That, Lord, those who are preaching a watered-down gospel would all of a sudden, they would have an encounter with you. They would have an Apostle Paul 
moment. They would have an encounter with you that would absolutely change their lives. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. That's why we're praying. That's why we're standing in the gap. That's why we're believing, Lord, for a breakthrough today. Lord, as well, because of the fact that we are praying that your people will become everything that you designed them to be. And as prayer warriors, Lord, I think of these wonderful intercessors. I think of these men and women, children and young people that have the gift of prayer. They close themselves off in their war rooms. They go for walks and they pray. And Lord, in those times and places of prayer, they are able to touch heaven. Lord, whatever frustration, whatever discouragement, whatever overwhelming that they have felt, it is going to disappear right now, and you're going to give them a new desire, a new compulsion, a new drive to pray. And Lord, they're going to seek the face of God. And Lord, they're going to be like the old uh, vernacular say, the old adage. They're going to take a hold, uh, hold of the horns of the altar. They're going to be like Jacob of old. And they're going to say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's what we're praying for. The next group that we're praying for today, Lord, is, of course, the disenfranchised. There are people out there that, Lord, have done, uh, they have basically, Lord, dropped out. Now, Lord, it was easy to do during the pandemic. Many churches were closed. Many churches only had online services. And so people got used to watching services online. But then what they did was they didn't come back to the house of the Lord. That stops today. Father, there is going to be an absolute drive in their hearts to join the house of the Lord again. All the excuses, all the reasons that, Lord, people have stayed away are going to evaporate right now in Jesus' name. It's going to dissipate. Why? Because all of a sudden, the Spirit of the living God is going to speak to them. They are going to realize, like David of old, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. They are going to know, like our Savior did, the importance of the house of the Lord. Jesus made it his habit. And to be followers of Jesus Christ, we need to make sure that we are in the house of the Lord. And so we're praying for that. Lord, we are praying for the disenfranchised, that today and tomorrow, there is going to be just an absolute delight. They're going to say, you know what? I've got to go to the house of the Lord. And as soon as they walk through the doors of Cornerstone where I pastor or the church that they used to go to, they're going to feel instantly a, 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 a coming home. They're going to feel this is where I belong. The apprehension, the anxiety, the fear or whatever emotions that they have had up to this point of not coming to the house of the Lord. There have been a multitude of reasons. They're just going to go. They're just going to be gone. Because, Lord, as soon as they walk in, it'll be like the prodigal. They'll walk in. They're going to feel immediately loved. It's going to be an absolute celebration. And we're thanking you for that right today. We're thanking that, Lord, today, people who were disconnected, people who neglected their wonderful salvation. Because we can do that. We can neglect that great salvation. We can get busy. We can actually allow ourselves, Lord, to fall out of love. And then what happens is, Lord, we become lukewarm and we become ineffective. Well, Father, that can change in a moment. And it's going to change right now. In this moment, those who have been disenfranchised for whatever reason, they're going to reconnect with you. They're going to feel a desire to open the Word of God. They're going to feel a desire to pray. It might have been a while. Lord, they're going to, in those prayer times, all of a sudden be healed and restored and reconciled and forgiven. And the first outgrowth of that is that, Lord, they're going to come home to a local church. Lord, thank you for that today. Lord, today we're praying for a group of people. They're called backsliders. They're individuals that, Lord, for whatever reason, have walked away from the most wonderful gift ever given, salvation. And, Lord, they no longer have that love, that desire, 
that they had for you at one time. Father, there's a multitude of reasons why people give up what they have. But Father, today we're praying that all of a sudden there's going to be a desire. There's going to be a a, a wonderful calling. Lord, you have called so many times. I, I think of Revelation chapter 22 that says, come. The spirit and the bride say, come. The son says, come. The saints say, come. Father, there's a call out there. And these individuals knew of that call. But for a multitudes of reasons, Lord, they're not in the house of God. And they're not even serving you. Lord, I think of my own church of Cornerstone. How that back in the 90s, during the uh, the uh, revival that was happening, Lord, in Toronto, and also the revival that was happening in Pensacola, there were many, many young people that were on fire for Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, some of them have left and gone to other churches. But Lord, many of them are no longer in the house of the Lord. The things of God do not thrill them anymore. And Lord, there are many, for example, that were saved during my revival. Lord, I think about how many people gave their lives to Jesus Christ during the Claire's Home Revival. But Father, now many of them are senior citizens. And Lord, you are not even on their radar. But today, in the name of Jesus, we are calling them back. We are asking the Spirit of the living God to speak directly to their hearts, to bring them back, Lord, into that place where all of a sudden there's a desire. All of a sudden there's a, a, a great calling in their lives. They're going to look fondly back on salvation. They're going to say, you know what? I am missing something so beautiful in my life. Father, however that happens... We are praying for them today. We are asking that, Lord, this would be the moment that you would speak to them. This would be the moment that, Lord, whatever reason, whatever excuse, whatever justification, whatever thing that they would use, Lord, to stay uh, from you would evaporate, disappear today. Lord, this would be the moment that they would remember fondly the blessings of salvation. They would remember the peace, the love, the joy, the grace. They would remember, Lord, the feeling of absolute purity and love in their hearts, the peace that passes all understanding. Right now, Lord, they don't have that. But in this moment, Lord, you're going to reach across the cosmos. You're going to find wherever they are whoever they are. And you're going to say, come home, come home. Lord, they're going to have that aha moment. I mean, Lord, when I think about the prodigal, here is a young man who, Lord, was wayward. He was in a pigsty. And yet, Lord, he had an aha moment. And he said, I'm going home. Father, that's what we're praying for today. We're praying that they will come home that they would find that wonderful salvation again. And Lord, we're going to be so thankful and grateful that they have come home. We're not going to sit there and say, well, it's about time. We're just going to say, we're going to throw our arms around them and say, I'm so glad that you're home. And Lord, that's what we're praying for today. Lord, the last group that we're praying for today in this prayer time is those wonderful unsaved people. Lord, for example, in the city of St. Albert where I pastor, there are 70,000 people that live in this city. And Lord, there is it's quite possible that somewhere between 65,000 people don't know you. They're like the people of Nineveh. They don't know their right hand from their left hand. They're children and young people, young adults, young families, families with teenage and finesters and seniors. Lord, they're male and female. They're young and they're old. Father, we're praying for them today. We're asking that, Lord, 
you have trophies of grace, heirs of salvation, that, Lord, are ready to be harvested. And, Father, you said, pray to the Lord of the harvest, that he would send laborers. Lord, this is not our work. Our work is, of course, to be laborers. Our work, Lord, is to go into the harvest. But how can we go into the harvest if we haven't prayed about who to reach and how to reach them? Father, that's what we're doing. I think of that that uh, community in Maine where the men got together and they said, we need to pray for the hardest sinner in town. And so they got together. They prayed and then they saw the hardest sinner come to know Christ the next day. And Father, by the time they were done, 200 of the toughest sinner men in that town came to know Jesus Christ and that town was forever changed. Lord, we know that there are people in different stages of their lives. We know that there are people out there that, Lord, are either far away from salvation or close to salvation. Either way, Lord, we are praying for an accelerated timetable concerning their salvation. We know that every day that people live, they can either become harder or softer. Father, we're praying for a softness. We're praying that the hardness of their heart would be broken right now. In fact, we have an example of the sower and seed. Lord, there are people out there who have hard hearts. We have people out there who have shallow hearts. We have people, Lord, who have hearts that are full of the cares and riches of the life. And Father, today, whatever stage they are, whether their heart is hard whether their heart is shallow, whether their heart is full of the cares and riches of this life, no matter what, Lord, we have a goal. And that goal is that, Lord, their hearts would become a heart that is ready to receive the gospel. That, Lord, they would be ready, Lord, to receive that wonderful salvation. We are crying out for them. Lord, today, would you reach out and touch them? Lord, today, would you bring that wonderful salvation? Would you set the captive free? Would you break every bondage? Would you break every fear? Would you break every tear? Lord, that's what we're praying for today. That's what we're believing for today, Lord, for them. Lord, we've covered everyone, but Lord, we want to see salvation. That's why we prayed for our unsaved loved ones. That's why we prayed for our family and our friends. That's why we prayed, Lord, for the different groups that we prayed today. We want them to experience the wonderful salvation that only you can bring. And that's what we've covered today with prayer. Please, Lord, whether they are, whether they're unsaved loved ones, whether they're the church, whether they are uh, the disenfranchised, the backsliders, or the unsaved, Father, today, in your mercy and in your grace, would you reach out to them? Would you touch them right now? We may know them, we may not know them. They may be our next door neighbor. They might be the person ar across the street. And Father, today, because the weather is so beautiful and right, Lord, we can actually go out and pray and do prayer walks. Father, I pray that each one of us would take that time, that we would go and have a prayer walk, that, Lord, every community that we live Every neighborhood would be covered in prayer. That's what we're praying for today. Would you make that happen, Lord? Would you do that, Lord, today in our lives? Father, we're claiming all these people for you. And we thank you for the wonderful privilege that we've had today, Lord, to pray this prayer. To stand in the gap. To call those things which are not as if they are. And to thank you, Lord, for the wonderful answers to prayer that you're bringing into our life situation. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to praise you, Lord. We want to give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it has been an absolute privilege to spend time with you today in this first prayer time. Of course, I'm going to be heading to Facebook Live to have my first prayer time with the people there. And we're going to thank the Lord for every single one. And we want to thank you today for spending time with me. I want to pray God's blessing upon you today. And I want to thank you for being with me today. Of course, if you like what you've been seeing 
uh, then I would encourage you to press the like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. My name is Robert Dean Steele. I want to pray a very special blessing for you today. So Lord, thank you today for those who participated with me today in this prayer time. I'm asking a very special blessing upon them. I pray throughout this day that you'll lead, guide, and direct them. That, Lord, all the wonderful provisions of heaven would be deposited into their life situation. That throughout this day, they would receive and experience the mercies of God. As uh, Jeremiah said, the mercies of God are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. We're believing for the faithfulness of God to be distributed upon each one. And we thank you for this now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have yourself a great and godly day.